Hey everyone, today I picked up the Samsung HTX30 5.1 home theatre system. This is pretty sweet. Um, as you can see, the speakers aren't on show, and that's because I didn't actually get the speakers. Um, I don't really like the Samsung speakers that, came, that, that comes with this package. They're not very nice looking, in my opinion. So I got a, a set of 5.1 Sony speakers, and they are outstanding. Really, really nice. And they work... They work nicely with this um, particular player as well. So, for those of you who don't know what this is, basically it's like a DVD player on steroids. Um, it's, at heart, a DVD player, but it's also got uh, 5.1 uh, encoding abilities. So, basically, it's like an AV receiver, like a home theatre AV receiver, just in a bit of a smaller package with way less outputs and way less inputs. Um... It's actually got a decent amount of um, ports on the back. I'll show you that later. But I'm just going to take you through the features. So um, a few things about this, guys. I think it packs in a total of 800 watts output power, which is pretty sweet. Um, it supports Dolby Pro Logic 2. We've got DTS, um, USB playback, all that kind of cool stuff. And um, yeah, so I'm going to take you through the front panel and stuff now. So as you can see, we've got the glorious Samsung gloss finish, um, like pretty much all of Samsung's products. It is um, not in perfect condition. I did pick it up second hand, but you know, I'm going to give it a bit of a clean and then it should be, should be perfect. Um, here we have the power button. Very nice. And here's the DVD drive itself with its eject button. It's a tray loading drive, but it's one of these ones that flips down and the thin one comes out. This door here flips down to reveal uh, the USB ports. I believe you can plug a pen drive or something in there and um, watch movies directly off the pen drive or listen to music directly off the pen drive probably as well. Um, and then you've got your uh, line in 3.5 mil jack to just jack in your iPod or your MP3 player or your Zune or whatever you've got. So that's all behind a nice little convenient hideaway door there. That's um, Those are two uh, fairly convenient ports on the front alone. So, I mean, you know, pretty pretty good stuff. Here you can just see these really nice uh, labels um, that make the product look nice and classy. You know, it shows off that it supports Dolby Digital and DTS and Windows Media Center and all that kind of stuff. Really nice. Here's a sticker that I probably take off because I've got this here and it looks a lot nicer. I'll probably take this sticker off, but it's basically saying the same difference as that. Um, we have all of our navigation keys then. Just all the standard stuff that you would expect. And then we have our glorious volume knob, which is really nice. I do like this volume knob and it's, you know, nice and responsive. Whatever. It's pretty cool. Here we have the remote. It's one of the standard Samsung remotes. All Samsung remotes seem to be in this kind of style these days. Um, it's got lots and lots, lots and lots of functionality. There's a lot of buttons on there, and um, it's got a lot of options, and it's pretty easy to use. So as you can see, this unit is fairly big. Look at it compared to my GameCube. Okay, it's really quite deep, but uh, that's to be expected because it's a little more than a DVD player. So um, I'm going to flip it round now, and I'll show you the ports at the back. Okay, guys, so like I said, very generous on ports at the back here. We'll start from left and go all the way over to right. So here you can see that it's a hardwired unit. Um, it's got an internal power supply, so it's got nice size to plug. Um, it's not a kettle lead, unfortunately. That would have been nice. I'm, I'm not keen on hardwired products, but I mean, you know, at the end of the day, this is going to be shoved on a shelf underneath my TV and you know, you're not going to really focus on the power cable, but hard wiring I've never been the biggest fan of. Uh, here we have our speaker connections then. For those of you who haven't seen connections like this before, um, basically it is just speaker cable, um, positive and negative speaker cable, but it's just got a little plastic thing on the end and that clicks in. It's slightly easier than using the spring terminals all the time, so um, that's cool. If you want to use your speakers with any other system that do use... Um, those terminals, then all you have to do is pull the plastic things off the end. But yeah, it jacks in here really nicely. As you can see, six connections for the five speakers and the one subwoofer. Very nice. Here we have the cooling fan for this system. Um, I don't know if this is controlled, you know, the hotter it gets, the more it spins or stuff like that. Or if it just stays at a constant spin or whatever. But I have to admit, for the time I was watching a film on it earlier, it is very, very quiet. 
Uh, moving over then, here we have a feature that lots of people seem to be talking about um, in regards to these kind of Samsung players, and this is this wireless feature. Now, I actually don't know what this is all about, guys. I haven't really been able to find much information. I looked for about five minutes, and, you know, people seem to be more talking about the kind of sound capabilities of this player. But, um... This might be to connect to your home network and, you know, uh, stream media over to this. I'm not quite sure, but, you know, that would be really, really cool, but something that I probably won't use. Here we have our standard left and right phono audio in. Um, so that'll be handy if, uh, say, for my GameCube now, I'll have uh, the video cable go into the TV or something, and if I want to get the audio, I'll just shove it in here and I can listen to it on my speaker system. So that's quite cool. Um, here we have our standard composite video out, uh, you know, analog. It's pretty good, handy, I guess, if you've got an older TV and you're using this system. Here we have our optical audio in. Um, that'll be very handy. I'm going to use that with my Power Mac G5. That is a very nice connection to have on here. HDMI out. This is pretty much the only way to go, in my opinion, if you're going to go out to a high-def TV. You know, components cool, but HDMI is the future. Um... Like I said, component out, you know, pretty standard, pretty nice, handy. SCART out, and we have our uh, uh, coaxial FM tuner. So for the antenna, um, you can hook it in there and get FM radio. So that is the player itself, guys. Really, uh, really cool stuff. I'm going to hook it up to the TV now, and I'll show you uh, the kind of stuff it does on screen. Okay guys, so uh, we've got it plugged in via HDMI uh, to our TV, it's a 19 inch TV, it'll run at 720p which is pretty good, um, I'm looking forward to getting my projector, I really really am, but that's not too far down the line. Um, so yeah, here's the player, you can just turn it on there, it says hello on screen, it's a really really nice unit, very very easy to work with, and as you can see it's come up on screen, there's no disc in the drive. There's the disk drive, just in case anyone was interested. I mean, you've got really nice navigation as well with the remote. It's very good. I always <laughs> uh, point the remote at the TV like the idiot that I am, uh, forgetting that it's this that I need to point it to. But yeah, you've got lots and lots of options regarding like speaker placement and, you know, optimized positions and all that stuff. It... Um, it's a really nice unit, and I like it a lot. So when we power it off there, goodbye, which is cool. And the best thing about this, guys, is it cost me only £30, which is a pretty good deal, in my opinion. Second hand, fully working, and it you know came with the remote, all the cables, and it came with the Sony speakers as well. So that's really, really nice. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, please look out for future videos regarding my home cinema setup, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.